and uh, there we go. Awesome, awesome. Uh, greetings, uh, welcome guys. Uh, after our uh, week off of uh, Zoom meetings, uh, but we had some stuff to do last week, and I just want to make sure that you guys are uh, most uh, everybody has turned everything in. Just wanted to, to let everybody know that um, uh, CPA number one and forum number two uh, were due uh, today, uh, you know, right before uh, class started. Uh, if you did happen to, I'm not a, you know, I'm not a hard guy on those things. So if you did happen to uh, either forget, not have, uh, you know, the time or the ability to do it, it's okay. Uh, you can still turn that in. Remember, as the syllabus talks about, you can turn that in for up to a week after the due date for credit. Okay, now you won't get full credit, but uh, don't uh, don't take zeros in here. Okay, uh, and don't be bashful if you happen to um, not be able to make a due date. Just send me a, an email, uh, a Canvas message, and it's not that big a deal. Uh, just don't take any zeros in here. Uh, those that's the only time when students uh, tend to struggle in my classes is, is if they just don't turn something in. Other than that, everybody's generally good to go. So CPA number one, forum number two, um, uh, as soon as possible if you haven't turned those in yet. Um, I uh, really did enjoy, uh, you know, last night uh, getting into uh, this morning, I was reading through a lot of your CPA uh, number one thoughts on uh, the prehistoric world and even uh, getting into what you thought civilization is. Uh, I, I would hope uh, that some of you would type some of those things into the chat today uh, just to get uh, some ideas flowing and to put a bow on uh, that part of our class. Uh, some other announcements uh, for today, okay, and for this week. Okay, here's here's what's going on this week. Uh, so, you know, use your uh, your phones, your computers, uh, if you want to write down notes uh, like we used to. We used to use uh, these things called pencils. Um, uh, they are a writing utensil. Uh, it's not an eating utensil. It's called a writing utensil. Uh, these were used uh, by uh, prehistoric human beings uh, that were born in the 80s and 90s, like your friendly professor. Um, okay, uh, yes, no, indifferent. Some people smiling, okay, plus 10 points if you're smiling at my- Aha! Uh -huh. Indeed, indeed, sir, plus 20 points for a cheesy laugh from Michael, thank you, sir. Um, the uh, stuff we're doing this week, <laughs> stuff we're doing this week, um, I, uh, I know this sounds like uh, this, this sounds like a lot, uh, but if you would, please uh, focus this week uh, your reading on uh, pages 42 through 52. Now I'm sorry about that to make you read 10 pages, uh, but uh, try your hardest uh, over the next four to five days. Uh, you can even read two pages a day, okay? Uh, try your way, uh, get your way through uh, it starts with section 2.13 in your text, and it covers ancient Egypt, okay? So section 2.13, but not even making you read all of section 2.13 uh, on Egypt. We're just getting into the major parts of ancient Egypt and uh, making sure that uh, we have a good grasp over uh, who the Egyptians were, where they were from, okay? So big W's again here, guys. Uh, who they are, where they're from, when were they around, okay, and what happened, okay? Remember those big four W's, okay? Uh, if you can get those big four W's out this week, you know, of kind of who, uh, what, uh, where, and when uh, these people were around, you would be uh, doing yourself a favor uh, and getting ahead of the game. All right. Um, this week, I will uh, be publishing uh, two uh, video uh, narrated uh, PowerPoints. Uh, I will put some voice to the one on uh, Mesopotamia. All right. Uh, and I will also be uh, sending out the one on Egypt. Okay. Uh, so make sure you're checking Canvas. Uh, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday uh, of this week, 
and uh, you'll start seeing uh, the videos just like we did for the first chapter uh, narrated uh, PowerPoint of the uh, prehistoric world. We'll do one of those. Uh, I'll put some voice to the Mesopotamia one and we'll do one on Egypt. Okay. Um, and, and that guys is going to wrap up uh, learning module number one this week. Okay. So learning module number one, we will put a bow on that on Friday. Okay. Uh, now what that means is uh, that next week, okay. Uh, uh, opening up uh, since this is a holiday weekend, um, remember uh, uh, we have uh, Labor Day on Monday. Uh, so just if you're planning uh, your schedule ahead, okay, uh, there's going to be no uh, Zoom meeting for us uh, on Monday of next week on uh, Labor Day Monday, okay. Uh, however, uh, before uh, we get uh, back together uh, in the Zoom room next week, uh, quiz test number one, okay, will become available for you to take, okay, that's covering uh, everything uh, from uh, learning module number one, all right, uh, and that will become available on Tuesday of next week, okay. Uh, so what is Tuesday of next week? Let me check my, uh, my, my calendar here. Um, that is going to be, uh, September the 8th. Okay. So just to keep this in mind, guys, you will have from September the 8th, uh, to, uh, basically, uh, before class, uh, on that Monday, September 14th, um, to September 14th at uh, 11 a.m. Uh, to complete uh, the first test, okay? First test and quiz. All right, so I'm gonna give you that whole week to do it, all right? Uh, you can take it right away on that Tuesday, September the 8th. Uh, you can turn it in Sunday night, doesn't matter, okay, uh, of, of that week. So that's gonna be next week, all right? But I'm just kind of giving you guys what's gonna be going on here. Uh, coming up. Okay. Uh, and uh, we'll talk much more on Friday about um, the quiz, what's going to be on it, uh, how it's going to work. Uh, is it timed? Yes. We'll talk about how much time, um, what are the questions going to look like, that type of thing. Okay. Uh, so all that's going to be taken care of on Friday. Uh, so uh, don't worry yourself about that. However, uh, if you do have questions, bring them uh, to the Zoom on Friday if you want to talk about you know, is this going to be on the test? Is this going to be on the quiz uh, next week? Um, those types of things. Uh, but I, uh, your friendly prof, will cover uh, how the questions are going to look uh, and what you're going to be uh, really responsible for. This isn't about tricking you. Uh, there's going to be nothing on the, on the quiz test next week that you haven't seen. Um, and it's just simply about um, making sure that you have been doing uh, uh, work and paying attention uh, over the last couple of weeks. That's simple, okay? Um, so it's, uh, uh, that's all that's going on uh, next week, so, okay? So um, what's going on this week, okay? Uh, as far as submissions and what's due, okay? People wanna know about what's due this week, all right? So what we are doing this week, okay, uh, is for Friday, uh, we're gonna have, uh, you're gonna see CPA number two, uh, become available, okay? Uh, that is due uh, by class time uh, this Friday, okay? CPA number two, guys, uh, is gonna go uh, over a couple things, okay? So I want you to bring your comments, your thoughts, uh, your uh, hopefully discussions like we're gonna do here in a minute with um, the first CPA. Uh, that's gonna cover uh, things uh, going on with Egypt, uh, and we're going to watch a, uh, what I think is a cool video uh, on uh, pyramid making and how the Egyptians built pyramids, uh, why they were important, those types of things. Um, and then I'm going to ask you a question about the notes, uh, just so that we're making sure that we're going over those. Okay. Um, so that should be an easy, quick uh, 10 plus points uh, for everybody uh, turned in uh, this coming Friday. I'll get all of the uh, assessment uh, points, all that thing out to you guys for the next 24, 48 hours. 
okay? Um, so that you'll have a pretty good idea uh, by, uh, you know, Wednesday evening, kind of how you've started and where you stand, okay? And it should be uh, with the uh, three things that we've done so far, uh, the two forum posts and the CPA. Um, all of us should be off to a, um, and I think from what I've read so far, um, almost all of us uh, are going to be off to a great uh, flying start. Okay. Um, so uh, that's that for the announcements. Okay. As far as, uh, you know, what's going on this week and kind of resetting the, uh, the uh, chessboard and kind of figuring out where we're at. Um, I guess I can open it up to you guys. If you have any questions about what's going on this week, feel free to ask them uh, right now. Uh, if you want to, um, I'll answer them uh, in the chat. Or go I ahead. And, uh, yeah, Connor, go ahead. Yeah, but did you? So um, I'm looking in the chat, and you said who, what, where, and when. Is uh -huh. that the question that we're asking? Or is that just figuring out for ourselves? Well, um, so that's a good point to make. So on, on, on a quiz, people who have had me before can, can attest to this. Um, I don't ask questions on the quiz like, when were the Egyptians around? Okay. Um, I ask questions on quizzes. Basically, what you guys need to figure out is um, things like, were the Egyptians before or after the Greeks? You know, when we go over the Greeks, okay? I, I like people having timeline understanding on when things happened, okay? So what you guys are gonna have an understanding of, but hopefully by the middle point and the end point of this class, is that the high point of Egyptian civilization happened around the year, you know, 1500 BC. And then the high point of Greek civilization happened around the year 400 BC. And then the high point of Roman civilization happened in and around right when the year zero happens and we switch into, uh, you know, the mod, uh, what, what's known as the CE or the, uh, the, what used to be called AD era. So as long as you guys have an understanding of when things took place, you do not ever need to have exact dates on things. I am not a professor that's going to ask exact dates. Okay. I'm never going to say, you know, when was the pyramid at Giza built? Okay. Cause those questions are uh, not uh, conducive to a good learning environment. Those tend to make students um, unhappy. Okay. And I'm here to kind of just help you uh, move along uh, and make the material more enjoyable to learn. So, uh, you know, as far as who, you know, and what's and those types of things, uh, we'll talk more about those on Friday. Uh, but there's some, uh, you know, points that you want to pick up on during the readings, okay? Uh, so, like some who's, you know, are you going to have to know who the Egyptians' major gods were? Yeah, yeah, you are. You know, you're going to have to know, you know, that the major Egyptian god was the sun god and his name was Ra. Okay, Th those are things that you're going to have to know for the quiz. All right. Um, but uh, as far as like, you know, exact dates, I'm not going to ask those. Um, but things like um, where the Egyptians are located. Yeah, you're going to need to know that. Uh, they're, you know, they're, you're going to need to know that they're located at the, you know, northeastern part of the continent of Africa and that they live in and around the Nile River. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, you're going to be able to use all of your notes. All right. You're going to be able to use your book. All right. Uh, if you want to use your book to answer questions, everything's going to be available for you. And I'll talk more about that on Friday. Cool. Um, so as far as like, uh, you know, <clears throat> this week is concerned uh, and things that we want to talk about, uh, you, know, you know, for this week, I do want to bring up some things from that CPA. So does anybody have, you know, some of you wrote some really cool stuff and, 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 and interesting stuff in your CPAs on what is civilization? Um, you know, what are the hallmarks of civilization? What is something you need for civilization to happen? All right. So um, does anybody want to throw something in there that they put in? Because like I said, I, I, I really, you guys had some really interesting thoughts and I would hope that you would share them with the, with the greater group today over what you thought uh, uh, people need for civilization to happen. Uh, so I'll kind of open up the floor to you guys. Agriculture. Uh, Mike, what, uh, Mike, you said agriculture. 
Or what, what do you mean by that? Um, so during the, uh, oh, I can't remember what it's called. The, it begins with an N. Neolithic. Revo- something revolution. Neolithic. That's it. Yep. Um, that revolution, there's uh, quite a lot of scholar articles and things um, written by people who reckon that that's where the root of kind of like civilization started was when yep. agriculture <laughs> started um, becoming a big thing for many people. Sure. Without a doubt, I, I totally agree. I, I think agriculture, the ability to um, produce, and we talked about this in the notes, guys, uh, surplus of food, okay? Um, when, a, when a human civilization is able to produce a surplus of food, okay? And that's why I'm, I'm going to type that in here to the chat, all right? One of the big questions, guaranteed question, all right? What other, what other kind of nice professor gives, just gives you the questions on quizzes and tests? Guaranteed question next week is, can you tell me the difference between the Paleolithic, which is the old Stone Age, and the Neolithic, which is the new Stone Age. And Mike has hit on a, a really good point here. Um, and what that is, is that people were able to grow food, okay, in the fancy, um, you know, uh, university college word to use is agriculture. Okay, People were able to grow food, and they were able to grow food at a rate that they can produce now, what we talked about in the notes, uh, a surplus of food okay and that's big for human beings when you don't have to worry about when you're where your next meal is coming from then human beings tend to start doing human being things which is we start um thinking we start um contemplating things like where is god or what is god or religious beliefs we start doing things like um, making little human being babies, all right? We tend to do that when we get full bellies, all right? You know, we, did, we get a good meal and then you don't have to worry about where your next meal is from. Uh, you tend to get a uh, little population booms, okay? Because uh, that's what we do as human beings, all right? And we'll just kind of leave it at that. Um, so, uh, but you guys aren't doing any of that because you're good students and you're in college, so none of that. Okay, all right, good for you. Um, um, so anywho, uh, this surplus of food is big, okay? It's big, uh, and we talked about- What so- actually yep. is the difference between uh, Neolithic and Paleolithic? Okay, um, so yeah, I mean, we talked about that a little bit in the notes, but just to sum up, um, you have uh, Paleolithic, much smaller groups, 20 to 30 human beings at a time, uh, your major tools are stones and bones, okay? Uh, whereas when you start getting into Neolithic era, which is after that last ice age, um, uh, human beings are able to uh, make, uh, uh, you know, tools that uh, function much better than just carving out bones. We're able to produce, uh, you know, better agriculture, crop rotations, um, and then a big thing, Mike, uh, that we also had and talked about in the notes, and we'll kind of sum up this, um, is uh, we were able to uh, domesticate animals. Right? The domestication of animals uh, is that is a major difference between Neo and Paleolithic. Uh, so we were able to herd animals together and use them as food, uh, use them for clothing, uh, use the leather from uh, cows and horses uh, uh, to make shoes. Uh, we were able to use uh, all those different types of things to make um, what we know today as uh, you know, staples of human society. Uh, so that, yeah, that, that's great. Those are all good things. I'm glad we were able to um, bring those out. Excellent, excellent. So anybody else got anything, uh, civilization? We talked about Maybe, maybe somebody wants to bring up the big one that we talked about with Mesopotamia. We did uh, forum post number two on this. Who wants to kind of throw that one out there? Mesopotamia, we did, you know, a lot of things in Mesopotamia. We looked at a few different things, but I think like if somebody came to you, you know, and they were like, you know, hey, you, uh, I don't know anything about Mesopotamia. Tell me one thing right now. Well, what would you tell them? What would you, what would you say? All right. What would be your most important thing you would talk about? Does anybody got anything they want to throw in the chat? Uh, or unmute yourself and talk about it. It's up to you. Whatever you want to do, man. If you don't feel like typing. Uh, 
all right. This is running just like a normal face-to-face -face class. Everybody's just staring at me like I have uh, lobsters gr uh, crawling out of my ears. Cool. Really, no one's gonna type in anything. Come on, man. <laughs> Somebody comes to you and they say, tell me something about Mesopotamia. What are you gonna say? Give me a name, something. It's between like these two rivers. Okay. Tar Tigris and I can't remember the other one. Euphrates. Very good. Thanks, Bish. Awesome. Bish. Thank you very much. Bish types in Hammurabi's code. Excellent. All right. I think those are those guys. So uh, Mike saying Tigris and Euphrates. Okay. Uh, which is awesome. Okay. Those are uh, some great what's. Those are the rivers. Okay. Uh, Bish thrown in. Hammer, uh, Hammurabi's code. That's a great what. Okay. Uh, Jalen's thrown in cuneiform. Excellent. Cuneiform is a fantastic uh, invention of the Mesopotamians. Writing. Okay. Uh, remember, but it's not, it's not an alphabet. All right? And we'll talk about that now. And, and I'll send that out and, we'll, and I'll talk about that in the um, narrated notes this week. It's not an alphabet. Okay. Uh, make sure you, you understand that about Mesopotamia. They do not have, they don't have a thing like we understand as an alphabet where one letter equals a sound. Okay. And you guys all went through this when you were little ones in grade school, hopefully you did, where you did this thing called phonics. Okay. And they made you sound out words and sound out letters and you read like stupid sentences and you were like, Ted made Fred bread. And like you, you, you remember those things that you did? Okay. Maybe or that, or that was just me. Okay. Or you did other like funny things. Like I remember one that I used to have to read was uh, Betty bought a bit of butter, but found the butter bitter. <laughs> no. Okay. Um, that was one of the, one of my favorite uh, phonics things. Cause it helped you sound it out words. That's not cuneiform writing. Basically guys, cuneiform is, is extremely difficult. Who knows the word of Egyptian writing, which is another really extremely difficult writing that we're going to go over this week. There's a word that people uh, identify as Egyptian writing. Hieroglyphics. Hieroglyphics. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you very much. Hieroglyphics that's been thrown in there. Excellent. Hieroglyphics is the Egyptian form of, of writing. Guys, that is, and we'll talk about it in the notes extremely difficult. You need to go to school for years to learn hieroglyphics and you need to go to school for years to learn cuneiform because you have to know that each little squiggle here and there changes the entire meaning of the word. They're very much like Chinese or Japanese characters today. All right? If you look at Chinese or Japanese character writing, one little shift of a Chinese or Japanese character writing, okay, um, changes the entire meaning of the word. Whereas with us, uh, in, you know, what we understand as the alphabet, if a letter is off, you guys, we still know what the word means. Okay. Now, if the letters are all jumbled up, then yeah, we got problems. But if one little letter is off here and there, our brains are like, okay, boom. And we just sort of plow through it. We understand what the word means. But these languages that we're going to be looking at, cuneiform, Mesopotamia, hieroglyphics, Egypt, you got to go to school for years to figure out what they mean. Okay. And what that means, guys, is that it's not available. Learning, reading, and writing is not available to everybody. Okay. Uh, learning uh, and, uh, and this thing that we know is reading and writing is, I'm going to type it in here in, a, in, a, in an all caps word. Uh, it's really exclusive to the elites, okay? Meaning the people at the very tippy top upper crust of the population, all right? The people with lots and lots of money or the people who were born into royalty. They're the only ones who are going to learn how to read and write in a lot of part of the ancient world in Mesopotamia and in um, Egypt. So what that means, guys, is, is that it doesn't mean that nobody else knows the language. You're able to speak it, 
you and I, you're able to have an oral talk. But if somebody wrote down the words, guys, it's amazing. The vast majority of people are totally illiterate in the ancient world, completely illiterate. They have no clue what reading and writing is. That's what makes us in the modern world so different and, and, and um, quite frankly revolutionary is the, is the fact that almost every single person, okay, uh, is able to read and write. Uh, and if someone doesn't have the ability to read and write in the modern world, we find that as terribly, uh, terribly sad and inconvenient. And we try to rectify that. All right. But guys, yes, we have to, so yeah, go ahead, Mike. Sorry, go on. No, go ahead. Um, okay. So is uh, cuneiform mm -hmm. writing, is that not, um, you know, like categorized as a language or? Oh, it's definitely a language. What? Certainly. Right. It's definitely a language. It's just terribly difficult to learn. Okay. Um, because in your book and in the notes, and, and I'll show you, um, you know, in order to know that this certain, uh, and it's called wedge shaped writing, that this certain wedge turned a certain way. I'm literally means, in a Zoom meeting right now. That, oh, okay. Yeah. Like, yes, we are at? in a meeting right now. Okay. Thanks. See ya. Okay. Awesome. Um, what that means, guys, is that if you turn that wedge certain ways or put certain things in the wedge, it changes the meaning of the word from like fish to tree. You, you, do, do, does any of you understand what I'm talking about here? Like maybe I can get some head nods or thumbs up. All right. That's not with our language. We don't have a language like that where one letter changes the word fish to the word tree. Uh, that's why our language is revolutionary and different. And we'll talk about the modern alphabet a little bit later. So the point with these languages, guys, uh, is that they're really hard to learn, all right? And, and they're not open to everybody. Uh, and so what that means is um, that only a certain amount of the population was able to dominate um, information. Uh, questions. Good. Questions coming in here. Uh, uh, see, did, um, uh, Hannah asked, uh, uh, did, did women who were elite rich also have the opportunity to become literate or just men? It's a very good question. Um, no, th there are uh, lots of examples of uh, uh, women uh, being very literate uh, in Mesopotamia and uh, Egypt. It's just that uh, they um, they had to be elite status. You're exactly right. All right. Um, as we'll talk about uh, within Egyptian religion, within Mesopotamian religion, within Greek religion and within Roman religion, women uh, held a very high status uh, in religious circles. All right. Uh, as priestesses, as uh, go-betweens. Um, when we get to the Greeks, We'll talk about this. There were these things called oracles. The Greeks believed in oracles. Maybe you've heard that. Maybe maybe you haven't. Um, an oracle was a woman, all right. And and, and the Greeks would um, go and 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 use. Uh, they, they they believed that women had special powers to go between uh, religion, uh, you know, gods and humans. Okay, so uh, women were uh, had a very a specific role, and we talked about that, okay, within uh, our first chapter where there's a division of labor. Women certainly have, you know, women's tasks and men have man work and those types of things. Um, and also, guys, one of the things that, that his, historians are going to be really interested about with our culture the last 20 years is how many women are getting into what was traditionally seen as, you know, man tasks and man work and, and how men are blending into and doing things that were traditionally seen as female occupations. Okay. Uh, that's awesome. Okay. Uh, but the ancient world had very strict lines between what men were doing for work and what women could do for work. And we'll talk about many of those jobs. Um, but uh, yeah, to finish up on that, uh, so to put a bow on this discussion, writing, okay, uh, writing, and then you guys, uh, uh, we, we mentioned Hammurabi's Code, 
Okay. Writing and then what writing leads to guys is the, one of the biggest things that we have going in our society, um, laws. Okay. Written laws where when guys, when laws are able to be written down, it's such a huge difference for human societies because now if it's written down, it's not just in the mind of an elite person who we all know this can change their minds from time to time. And you would go to the judge. If the law wasn't written down, you would go to the judge and the judge would rule and you would say, Hey, that's not the same ruling you just gave to my neighbor last week. And the judge would be like, yeah, well, the law is different for him as it is for you. We don't like that as human beings. We don't like when the law is different for some people and not in the, in, in, in other people. We, that upsets us and it should upset us. Right. And I'm not, I shouldn't be the first one you tell telling you guys this. I mean, you guys are all realizing this just like everybody else that even in the modern world, have we corrected this? No, we haven't. The, the law is still in the modern world, even if it's written down, law is applied differently for lots of different things. Laws apply differently. Uh, you know, how many times have you heard it? You know, if you got money and you got the ability to hire a good lawyer, you can get out of a lot of things. Okay. So law in the modern world, guys, even though it's written down, is still, um, let's see, uh, uh, unjustly applied in certain cases. Uh, and we see that with, um, gender breakdown. Sometimes laws are applied differently to men and women. We see that along, uh, you know, uh, racial and cultural uh, breakdown. Sometimes certainly um, you have uh, laws applied differently along racial lines. Um, still a very uh, interesting and in some ways unjust uh, system, but it's who we are. We're imperfect. We're human beings. All right. And it's just, we got to work our way through these things. Um, but writing the laws down is huge. And Hammurabi's code is one of those things. Uh, the ability to write down a law so that you can go to, and we'll talk about it, you know, this in the notes and you'll see it. You can go to this gigantic thing that they would put in the middle of the city. And they would say, that's the law. All right? And they would point at the law. Okay. And they would say, let's go talk about this law. Okay. And hopefully you guys um, uh, talked about that on uh, your forum posts. And I read through some of them today and they were great. All right. A um, few more minutes here. Let's talk a few more minutes here. We're, you know, we'll, and, and, we'll, and we'll get on, get out of here uh, for the week. Um, so we're doing, this is great. We got writing, we got um, agriculture going, uh, we got laws. Anybody else put anything down? Um, uh, or if you want to talk about it, if you want to stick on Hammurabi's code, we, we did that for forum post. Uh, number two, we talked about, you know, modern, applications of Hammurabi's code, or we talked about what, which law you found was most interesting. Maybe, maybe that'll be um, something else that, that people want to throw in, like which ones they, they found most interesting um, uh, to those things. Also, guys, remember uh, to, uh, and I was going through those this morning, um, get your reply into your classmates, all right? That's a big part of those forum posts. Um, some of us are not replying to our classmate buddies um, and you're losing points on those. So make sure you get your replies out uh, if you haven't done that uh, to each other. And it's okay if it's a little late. It's all right. Not gonna, not gonna crush you for it. Okay. Because uh, we're just starting. We're, we're still early. It's not even September yet. I mean, it's still August. Okay. I had a really good one. Yeah. Uh, did you have uh, uh, anybody? Uh, what was that, Mike? That was talking. Um, as far as uh, Hammurabi's code or anybody else want to throw in what they found was interesting uh, in the code uh, that we read. We had a couple of videos on it. I found something interesting about yeah, Katie. Like, an eye for an eye. Yeah. Like, like I had written about it, like, I know back in the day, like when everything was written, like an eye for an eye, like if somebody did something to somebody, then they'd paid the same way. Right. And I saw that in Iran and Saudi Arabia that, although rare, they still like, yes. apply that. And yes. like, uh -huh. I mean, there was a case where somebody like paralyzed somebody by stabbing them. Mm -hmm. And instead of like paralyzing them, they medically like yeah. pretty much like took away somebody's like vision. 
Isn't that crazy? Because yeah. I was just blown by that they mm -hmm. still like use that. There's but, a lot. It's a great point to make, Katie. There's a lot of things um, that you'll see culturally uh, in certain areas of the world. So first of all, let's talk about that, okay? Uh, Hammurabi's code is from that region, okay, of modern day Iraq and Iran, okay? So right off the bat, guys, okay, we're, we're, we're looking at, a, at kind of a geographic thing, right? So if, if an ancient law of your culture existed in that geographic area, right, of modern day Iraq and Iran, certainly there's going to be aspects of that trickling down into the modern world. Absolutely. Uh, and, you know, so for instance, we find that in our geographic region, we find that um, terribly, uh, unjust or violent or what we have in our justice system okay within the american or western justice system all right, and this is written in one of our um, bill of rights okay within the american bill of rights you're not allowed to punish someone there's a phrase does anybody know what that phrase is called you're not allowed to have um it's blank and blank punishment does anybody remember that from reading your civics classes in modern American law? I see some people tap in. Very good. Excellent. We have a specific law in modern America where you are not allowed. We have an amendment. You're not allowed to punish someone cruel and unusually. Okay. Now those are really kind of, uh, amorphous or, 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 um, unspecific words, but, Cruel and unusual punishment is something that's banned. So you're not allowed to in our world. You're not allowed to blind somebody if they got into, uh, you know, a wreck with, with someone and were charged with, you know, vehicular homicide. You aren't allowed to put them out and lay them down in front of traffic. Now, it's cruel and unusual, okay? Um, Every once in a while, though, I mean, I'm, you hear it, you know, you hear it with either within your family, uh, you know, mom or dad, grandparents, they're like, you know, you watch the news and something terrible happens to somebody and they're like, they should do the exact same thing to that guy, you know, and that it's like almost like in us, you know, it's, it's internal, you know, where, where, you know, we've had a lot of bad things going on in our country the last couple months as far as, you know, brutality and, and uh, you know, things going on uh, with, with, with violence, uh, you know, in the streets. And I know that there was a lot of people, you know, um, that said, well, he, he did that to that guy. They should do the same thing to him, you know, that they should be able to do that. To, and, and what that does, guys, is that, sends a message to us as human beings that we're all kind of the same. And even though it was 3,000 years ago in Hammurabi's code time, that human feeling of you get really angry and emotional and you're like, dang it, they should do the same thing to that guy. They should do that to him, all right? Because he did that to that guy. And that's what that tells us, guys, is we're all human. We're all human beings. And, uh, it's just been uh, a, a real interesting to see that because it pops back up from time to time in, in, in human culture. And what they did in Mesopotamia is they wrote it down as law. You do that to that guy, we get to do that to you. Um, and modern societies have shied away from that um, because it, it leads in many ways to violence. Uh, and uh, unsettled situations. That's a good point to make. Excellent. Um, good, 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 good. Um, so yeah, guys, um, make sure, like I said, we're, what are we at? 43 ads. Yeah, good, good, good. We're, we're, we're off and running for this week. Um, announcements, like I said, if you need to review those, they were, they were made at the beginning of class. Okay, so this will be up um, on Canvas later to review it for your announcements. Um, we're back in uh, here uh, to talk about CPA number two uh, on Friday, okay? 
Uh, CPA number two this week, guys, we're going to be watching a video uh, on Egypt. All right. Uh, and we're going to be doing some notes on Egypt. All right. And I know, I'm sorry, a whole 10 pages of reading on Egypt. Uh, so this is kind of Egypt week. Uh, I'm going to be really interested to see what you guys have to say uh, about the Egyptians on Friday. Uh, bring those thoughts in. What I'm going to do uh, this week that's, that's a little bit different with the CPA is instead of having you guys email it to me, all right, uh, and, you know, uh, that was one thing that I, that, um, I, I did last semester when, when we pivoted to remote. I'm going to make the CPA uh, something that you can just submit directly to Canvas so you don't have to email it to me, okay? It'll be, it'll be easier on your parts so you don't have to contain it in an email to me. I'm gonna make the CPA able for you guys just to submit the document to Canvas, okay? Um, so I'll, I'll put that here in the chat as well. Uh, CPA number two um, and the rest of them uh, will be uh, able uh, to be submitted uh, directly uh, to Canvas. Because that um, that's just, I don't know why I did it that way. I guess it's because I did it that way last spring, and it, it it's just I don't know. It's it's kind of old schooly, and I don't, I don't know. We need to do it. We need to do it differently from Canvas because my I mean it's just they come flooding in and it takes up my entire like mailbox timeline is full of CPAs and and don't get me wrong I like reading them but I'd rather just have you guys submit them to uh, Canvas. Okay, so that's what we're doing this week, um, and that's that. Okay, so if you have any questions, comments, uh, send them to me uh, in a message. Uh, but this will be up later uh, in a little bit uh, once it's all uh, put together. Uh, and I will see you guys uh, back in here uh, Friday at 11.15. Cool? Awesome. Great. Uh, well, until then, friends, uh, I bid you uh, happy reading and uh, really hope you enjoy Egypt. Take care.